Welcome back everybody to another video and today we're going back to the basics episode two and on our first episode of back to the basics we went through what is a streaming device and we went through the various kinds of streaming devices you can find online. Now if you want to watch that video you can click right here above or you can go to the playlist back to the basics. Now back to the basics was created for beginner users and eventually intermediate users where you could get basic information that you may not have already known in one place. And it's a series where you can start from the beginning and learn your way up on what streaming devices are. Now on episode two, we're, we're focusing on how to set up an Android TV box. So today I have the KM, KM2, yeah, KM2. Uh, me cool box, great box. I suggest checking out their website if you guys want. Not a promotion, they just have good products. Um, and I'm gonna be showing you how to set it up from start to finish. Now this is a pretty basic guide. So if you're a more of an intermediate to advanced user, this may not be the guide for you, but you still might learn something you didn't know before. So like always guys, smash that subscribe button down below. It really helps the channel out a ton. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and comment down below what other episodes of Back to the Basics you think I should do next. As well, if you guys have a minute, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at upgrade underscore guy. It would help me out a ton. I'm trying to get up to a thousand followers by the end of the year. So let's reach that goal. Let's go ahead and get back to the basics. All right, everybody. So this video is gonna have two components. The first part is gonna be me showing you the unboxing of the device and where the components go. So how do you initially set it up? And then from there, we're gonna be plugging the box in and I'm gonna be showing you what settings you change first and how to get your actual Android box set up from there. So today's box, like I said, is the KM2. Really good Android box, but there's tons of different TV boxes and this tutorial work the exact same for all of them although the interface on the device might look a little bit different. So let's get started with what comes in the box with a normal Android TV box. And that's pretty simple because there's not a lot of components to it. We start with the actual Android box itself. I'm not gonna go through more advanced on it. All you have to know really is the plug-in port and then the HDMI. And then of course, if you wanna hook up um, an ethernet cable, which is just a direct internet connection, that's this old school telephone looking line, you know, if you're a little bit older, um, just your landline, and it will run from your router all the way to the Android box. Um, I do suggest that if you want faster speeds, but your Wi-Fi will work perfectly fine, so don't worry about it. Of course, you have HDMI ports and stuff, but unless you're setting up a USB, you really don't need to worry about them. Other things that come in the box are your HDMI cord. So now your HDMI cord is how you hook it up to your TV, uh, so it basically runs from your Android box directly to the HDMI port on your TV. Now, some people have asked me in the past, well, if I don't have HDMI ports on your TV, can I run an Android box? There are converters you can get that go from HDMI to RCA. However, I have not had a lot of good experiences using them. So if you have a super old TV, I would really suggest trying to find a used TV if possible. There's so many out there that are so cheap with HDMI ports right now. You should be able to pick one up for as low as 50 bucks or probably even cheaper if you, you know, don't care about the size and quality. So you would just plug it into the HDMI port on the back here. So I'll just turn it around. And then this other end plugs into any HDMI port on your TV. So tons of choices and very, very simple. So I'll unplug that for now. The next thing you get in the box with every Android TV box is a power cord. Now, of course, this is how you power up the box. Um, most of the time they work, but every once in a while you'll get an Android box with a cord that doesn't work. And usually the problem isn't the box, but the power cord itself. And that's because a lot of these Android boxes, not the ME cool, but a lot of them do come with cheap power cords. This one's pretty good and it's pretty long, but sometimes they can be super short as well. So keep that in mind. You might have to buy a longer, uh, better power cord. It is a possibility, but usually they work. So as the HDMI is plugged in, you would just plug it into the back and then we plug it into our power. And that is it guys. Once you have your HDMI and your power cable plugged in, your box is all set up, ready to get started on your TV screen. Now, the last thing you do get with the ME Cool or with any Android box is a remote. 
Now the remotes that come with Android TV boxes are usually pretty bad. So this one is pretty good for the ME Cool, but a lot of them are not that great. So I usually do recommend a keyboard remote. And I'm gonna show you guys what a keyboard remote looks like right away here. Um, but th these remotes are pretty basic. They just have your power, they have your movement buttons, they have your volume up and down, your channel buttons. And this one has a little bit more advanced because it has shortcut buttons for streaming services like Netflix or Prime Video. So let me get up and I'm gonna show you guys what the keyboard remote looks like so you can have an idea. So now this is what a keyboard remote looks like. Uh, they're very simple and they just have this nice touchpad here so then you can easily type things in. I really recommend buying one with an Android TV box. There's a lot of different options for keyboard remotes, but as long as they come with this USB receiver, that's this little guy right here, then it will work with an Android box almost 99% of the time. All you do is plug this receiver into your Android TV box like so, and it automatically pairs the remote to the box. Now, sometimes this receiver will only work on USB 3.0 or USB 2.0. So you may have to test out which port is which and see if your box even has a USB 3.0, which is the one that usually has the blue lining inside. Now, that's pretty much it for all the basic information on your Android TV box. Now let's go ahead and move to how to set it up once you've set up the power cord, the HDMI, and hooked it up to your TV. Let's go ahead and get into that part. All right, everybody. So here is my Android TV box set up. Now this is on, this interface may look different from your interface, so please keep that in mind, but the instructions are basically the exact same. So although your interface looks different, the way you set it up is 99% of the time, the exact same. The first thing I'll show you is memory clean. Now yours may look like a rocket ship. Yours may see, say cache cleaner, but all it does is basically clear the, the leftover cache on your device um, from different applications. So every once in a while, just press it. Uh, you know, there's better cleaners out there and I'm gonna do a video showing you guys them. But for now, memory clean, pretty straightforward. All of you, almost all of you will have a plus button somewhere. Now what that does is add any application to your front screen. So you can see I checked off these three and now they get added to my front screen. To uncheck them, you just go back, we uncheck them and press back and all of a sudden you can see it's good to go. There's no more apps added. On top of that, you usually do have an app section like this where it shows all of your applications in one place and every box comes pre-installed with some apps, including like usually Chrome, Facebook sometimes, the Play Store, which is where you can go inside in order to download different applications. So I'll show you the Play Store here really quickly. You'll have to sign in using some sort of Google email, so keep that in mind. Now, remember this isn't the full Play Store that you're going to get on an Nvidia Shield or even on your phone. That's because most Android TV boxes aren't licensed with the full version. So you can still download a certain amount of stuff, but a lot of applications won't have the full version like Netflix or Prime Video. Now, most boxes now do come pre-installed with a system version of Netflix and sometimes Prime Video, but these usually are mobile versions. So they usually won't work the way you want them to, but they get the job done. If you want an official device for Netflix for Prime Video, I suggest a Fire Stick. I suggest a Google certified box like MA Cool, like uh, the My Box. There's a few different choices out there. Um, or of course, an NVIDIA Shield. So you do have to get a more official device to get the full 4K 1080p version of Netflix. Otherwise, you're just gonna get a mobile version, which some people find annoying. But let's get started with the first thing I suggest doing when you start your Android box, and that's going to settings. Now, everybody's settings tab may look a little bit differently, but it's usually represented as a gear. So I'm gonna click on the gear. And the first thing you wanna do is of course, sign into your internet. So you'd go to your network and internet. And then from there, your Wi-Fi will sometimes pop up, but sometimes you have to go to see all. So we can see right here. Then you'd wanna find your Wi-Fi connection. So I'll just click on a random one. And you just simply enter whatever your password is and then scroll and press the OK button, and that will load up your Wi-Fi. It's not gonna work because that's not my actual Wi-Fi. So if that, that should connect right away, no problem. If we scroll down in this section, you will also see Ethernet. 
Now it says not connected because I don't have it connected. Sometimes you have to check off a box that says connect ethernet for your ethernet to actually connect. And you would just do that right here. This one, it just auto connects. So I don't have to worry about that. Other than that, there's nothing else you have to touch in this Wi-Fi menu. You can see it shows my Wi-Fi is connected, Spyro's Kingdom, that's the name of my gecko. Um, and you can see it's connected. And then it also shows me when I go out of settings, a little Wi-Fi bar in the top right. And that will show how strong the connection is as well. You can see mine's fully highlighted, but if we go back to settings and we go to Wi-Fi, you can see some of these settings, some of these Wi-Fi connections aren't fully shaded in. Now, if yours isn't fully shaded in, that can greatly affect your internet speed, which greatly affects your streaming experience. So I highly suggest if that's the case, an ethernet connection, Wi-Fi boosters, there's a few different options to make sure you're getting the most out of your single signal. Now, other than that, the only other thing I really have to show for you for this video until we get into more advanced operations for you is your app section. Now, when you click apps, then you can click see all apps. The first row of apps, this is gonna be all apps that you have installed, where if you go to system apps, these are apps that come pre-installed with the operating system most of the time. So like Blockada, for example, shouldn't be in there. Um, but most of the time it's just system apps. So usually you don't have to touch anything from there. Now, any apps you do install, you can uninstall anytime by coming into settings here, finding it, and then pressing uninstall and it's uninstalled. From here, you can also, if you're having trouble with apps and they aren't running correctly, you can also go and force stop the app. This will just basically reset it not back to new, but it will close the app like it wasn't open. And this usually fixes any problem you have with the app. The last thing you can try when you're having issues with an app is clearing the data. Now this clears anything that you've done on the app and it basically like fresh installing the app. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that. Other than that guys, this episode of Back to the Basics was meant just to show you how to set up your streaming box in the simplest terms. I really hope this was helpful to some of you and I would appreciate it if you press subscribe before you leave and check out for my next episode of Back to the Basics number three. I will check you all in the next video.